Okay, so a while ago I did a video on this Compute Module 4 Mini Router and uh, it's a great little device. I ended up flashing Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit to it, just playing around with it and I figured that I would play around with it a bit more, but I just haven't got around to it. But I figured I'd try and put Berry Boot on it. I haven't tried it before. Uh, it's not as straightforward to set up a Compute Module 4 as it is a Raspberry Pi 4 or a 400 or a Raspberry Pi Zero, but uh, let's give it a go. First of all, I need to take it apart. I've removed the four screws from the bottom and uh, I can just take this base off and tip it upside down and pull it apart. There we go. Uh, so this is using a little thermal pad. So this would probably benefit with this aluminium lid from having some thermal paste. I might do that when I put it back together. So the first thing I need to do is put a cable on these two pins, uh, joining them together to enable USB uh, so another device can write to this. And I have one of these from uh, my little Pico kit. So let's just use the orange cables. So that's just joining the two together. Now I can plug it in with a USB-C cable, USB-C to A cable into my Pi 4. So this is the USB-A to C cable that came with a Pixel 3a phone. Uh, so it needs to be a data cable. Uh, now, because I'm running the OS from USB 3, I'm gonna plug this into USB 2. I'm only writing Berry Boot, which is a tiny amount of uh, data. So let's pop that into USB-C, and I'm hoping the operating system will recognize it. I'll switch over to screen capture. So I'm using Jeff Geerling's blog uh, to copy over the information that I need. So I need to copy these two lines, uh, CD USB boot, and paste that in. Now it's sudo dot forward slash RPI boot. Okay, so it looks like it's there now. So if I go into files, yeah, boot and root is there. So this is as if it was an SD card or a USB device. It's using the onboard eMMC drive in the Compute Module 4. Uh, so let's minimize all this. Uh, start up Raspberry Pi Imager. And I'm just gonna erase it to storage. That's my eMMC drive and hit right. And yes. And while it's doing that, let's get Berry Boot. I'm picking Berry Boot because uh, it's very easy to add and delete operating systems, so uh, I don't need to take this apart to add or get rid of an operating system if this all works. So Berry Boot version two, let's download this. So it's only 47 megabytes, so it won't take very long. Okay, so that's all done. So I can now go to my downloads folder, find Berry Boot, and let's do extract here. And that's all done. So now I need to copy the contents of this onto the eMMC drive of the Compute Module 4. So if I do Control A and copy, and then I call up this drive and then paste that in. So it looks like it's gonna take ages, but then it speeds right up. Okay, so let's close that down. Okay, so I've ejected the CM4 and uh, I'm going to plug in this SSD because this is the one I want to use for all the operating systems. So let's plug it into USB 2 so it uses less power and let's erase this drive with Raspberry Pi Imager again. So 240 gig and hit right and yes. Okay, so that's all done so I can shut all this down now. So I can unplug these two pins because I want to use this normally. I'm not going to put it back together first of all because I want to test that it actually works. Uh, I'm going to plug this into one of the USB sockets and they're both USB 3. So this is a blank 240 gig SSD and the Compute Module 4 with its 32 gig of eMMC storage uh, which has got Berry Boot on it. So fingers crossed is this going to boot? Let's plug everything normally in. So I'm going to need a keyboard in the only other USB socket. And then I'm gonna need power and also HDMI. We have lights, three lights. Uh, it's, it's definitely booting because I've got the blue light. So that's the first bit working. Let's switch over to screen capture. Okay, so first time failed creating a partition. Took ages and ages and uh, it still wasn't doing it. So I canceled it, I formatted the drive. And this is the second attempt. Uh, it did say failed to unmount partition. Uh, I think that's what it said, and uh, but it's carried on like this. And I just checked my uh, second ever Barry Boot video and uh, I had the same issue, carried on and it seemed to have worked. 
So let's do Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit. Okay, so that's finished. So okay to reboot. And let's see what happens. It seems to be booting okay. Okay, so now it's stuck waiting for data partition. I'm going to switch it off and switch it on again. Okay, it's slow, but it seems to be doing it. Ah, here we go, Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit. Let's click boot. It's working, but it seems very slow. Okay, so it booted, but it's in emergency mode. Uh, I think what I might do is try and boot it up with USB 2. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to put it through a hub and see if that works. Okay, so I've managed to get it booting up now. And uh, I was going to try USB 2. I've got my hub already uh, prepared. But uh, I figured I'd just switch over the two USB sockets. And uh, so I basically swapped over the mouse keyboard adapter with the USB to SATA cable. And uh, it's booted up fine. And actually the speed test is really good. So comparing the uh, speed test to uh, an old video I've got where I first had this crucial drive when it was brand new, the sequential write speed was 303,407. So it's slower on the sequential write speed, but not by loads. And that's not that important for an operating system. But what's interesting is the random write speed is uh, 10,995 on my old test on a Pi 4 with a, a SATA USB cable. And uh, this test is 13,872, so way faster write speed. And the read speed uh, on the old test was 13,266, on the new one is 13,034. So slightly slower on that, but the random write speed is faster. So at least I know it's working kind of to spec because that's, that's similar results. Right, I need to really try and get another operating system on. Let's close this down. Uh, just show you um, that everything feels pretty snappy. Um, so if I was to pick something like Raspberry Pi configuration, it all boots up nice and fast and everything seems fine. So let's shut that down and keep using it in this configuration. So with the USB SATA drive in the top USB socket. Obviously this is going to be different for every Compute Module 4 board that you get because they're, they're obviously configured differently. But it was interesting that I got much better results on this. But I'll keep trying it anyway. So let's shut it down. So it definitely takes a little bit of time to mount the data partition. So the boot up is definitely slower uh, than it would be on a Pi 4. But it seems to be booting normally. Uh, it just takes a bit longer to get to that point. I'll let it uh, count itself down and see what it does on its own. So I'm not getting any of the errors now. Uh, when, it, when it was on this bit before with the drive in the other socket, I was definitely getting errors at this point, but it seems to be working fine. Although, again, this bit seems slow. When it's checking everything, it definitely feels slow. And it looks like it's got stuck at this point. So fail to start DPLYS swap file. But it seems to be carrying on now. Okay, so it did get there in the end, but um, and, and once it started, it seems absolutely fine. Okay, so let's shut this down. Probably take ages to shut down as well. Oh, it doesn't even want to shut down, look. I believe it's crashed. Okay. Oh, no, it is doing... Oh, crikey, it is running slow. So I'm shutting it down now. It's a shame because that speed test was promising. Okay, so I've got no activity now, so let's turn that off. And plug in to this same USB socket. But I'm plugging in a USB 2 adapter, so I'm basically forcing it to be USB 2. So let's plug in the SSD drive. Okay, so let's try booting up and see what happens. So mounting data partition has come up just the same as it does on the other one. Still taking its time though. Uh, it's just as slow, I think, doing this bit. I was, I was just hoping sometimes if you get a problem with an operating system booting from USB, if you plug it into USB 2 on the Pi, uh, it tends to be better, but yeah, this isn't making any difference. Right, abandon this, and I'm going to use USB-C uh, and uh, boot on the go, see if that makes a difference. Okay, so USB on the go adapter. So uh, the USB-C goes into here, then that powers the Pi but hopefully it'll enable these USB sockets. So let's plug that into the USB-C, plug the drive into the USB-3 socket, and plug the USB-C into the power, and switch on. Don't know if this will even boot, because you sometimes need to enable on-the-go support uh, on the Pi, so we'll see what happens. I don't think it's even booting. It might be. Sometimes I get this with my 
sat up where I have to unplug the HDMI and plug it back in again and the monitor springs to life but I don't know if it's going to happen this time. Yeah it doesn't like USB-C uh, without any configuration let's just switch off plug it into the USB 2 socket and just give it another go. It's weird could you think when the light comes on that it'd be booting from the EMMC drive anyway because that that bit doesn't even need the SSD drive but it's not even trying to boot so it doesn't like USB-C on the go. So uh, again, there may be some configuration for this. So I'm gonna try a different drive this time. So I tried 120 gig uh, SSD drive and had the same sort of results. I've tried two different SATA to USB cables and these usually work great with the Pi 4. I've had really good results and pretty much every operating system works with these two cables. But I have got something that successfully boots on USB and uh, it's a Samsung bar so I've got 128 gig Samsung bar in here um, they're not as fast as an SSD but they're not far off uh, they're very inexpensive uh, for what they are and uh, they are just just really really decent really compatible and this works straight away didn't have any issues any errors so let's boot it up and the reason I've got this hub plugged in is because this board only has two USB 3 sockets uh, and I want to be able to plug a USB stick in to get another operating system on. So you can see it boots up nice and quick and it's going to boot into Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye which I've added as an operating system. And if I uh, do Control Alt T to get a terminal up and let's uh, launch Gparted. So you can see this is the EMMC drive in the Compute Module 4 uh, and if I click on this, I can see my 128 gig Samsung bar. So everything is all working as it should. Let's open a browser and uh, you can see I've got one here, Berry Beta Server. Uh, there's a link for this on the Facebook page and it basically has the very latest ones that have been updated. I've downloaded Manjaro ARM XFCE uh, just to give it a try. So that's on the USB stick that you've seen on the picture earlier on. Uh, but also if I get a Berry Server, you can download other images on there as well. Now, it doesn't really say uh, Compute Module 4 on here, but it does have uh, Raspberry Pi 4 images. If I go to Berry Boot Images here, so there's the latest OS images, so you can see Ubuntu 2110, uh, Raspberry Pi 3 and 4, and so on. So you just download an image, put it on a USB stick, and then put it into the, the Pi when you're booting up Berry Boot. So let's plug my USB stick in, and I've got loads of stuff on this one. Uh, so if I close all this down because I've already downloaded one and you can see 124 gig shows up this is my USB stick and uh, that's the Manjaro that I've just downloaded and if we look at the whole image it does say berryboot.image so it's recognized by berryboot so let's shut this down and just to recap so berryboot is running from the EMMC drive in the compute module 4 the operating systems are being installed onto the USB stick, so there's already two on there, 64-bit and 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS. Um, but I also have this hub plugged in uh, with my USB stick, which has got Manjaro, which I want to install into Berry Boot, and this is just my mouse keyboard adapter. So on immediate boot up, you press the edit menu tab that comes up on the screen, and uh, it gives you this. And if I press and hold on add OS, left click, and uh, copy OS from USB stick, you can see that it sees two devices. This is the EMMC drive, and this is my USB stick. So hit open, and you can see Manjaro is there. Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye is the other one I did, so in my testing, I've already transferred that over, and that works absolutely fine. So let's hit open, and you can see it starts to copy the file over. So we'll come back when that's all done. So it doesn't take very long at all, and you can see Manjaro ARM XFC is there. Uh, so let's hit exit and it starts up nice and quick. You can see it wants to uh, boot Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye, but I'll click on Manjaro and boot. And this is first time boot. I haven't tried this. Uh, I don't know if it works with the Compute Module 4, but everything looks okay so far. Yes, yeah, booting up really fast. I've left that in real time and uh, it's, uh, it's definitely booting up really fast considering this is the first time of boot as well. Oh, well, this is nice. Let's change the language, change the time zone. It's a, it's a very nice looking setup and it's just configuring it all now. And so it wants to restart, so let's let it do that. So I've clicked on Manjaro and boot. 
and I'll leave it in real time because it did seem to boot up really fast last time as well. Uh, so obviously USB probably a little bit faster than that EMMC drive uh, that's built into the Compute Module 4, but it's it's that expandable storage. So the fact that I now have 128 gig and I can easily just add an operating system, play around with it, see if it works with the Compute Module 4. Because the Compute Module 4 just isn't as straightforward as a Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 400 in just switching between operating systems, I think this is a good option. So sound and video playback are working absolutely fine. So let's put it back into its case and uh, I'm going to get rid of the thermal pad and I'm going to use a bit of thermal paste. So let's unplug everything. Take this pad off and I've got some thermal paste here. Pop a bit on. Not the neatest. And so I can drop this in. It's a really nice case to put together. Yeah, I can feel that touching on the thermal paste. Pop this lid on. And just four screws. But it is a lot of bother if you want to take it apart and every time you have to put this on to be able to boot another operating system. So I think Berry Boot is a very good option for it. I haven't tried Pin OS yet. Um, but uh, I might look at that in the future, but I really like the fact that I can get Barry Boot on it and I can really start playing around with it because I haven't used the Compute Module 4 an awful lot um, because the Pi 4 and Pi 400 is just so much easier. Um, but I really wanted to see you know, what operating systems do and don't work with it because it is very, very similar architecture to a, a Pi 4 or a Pi 400. And let's pop all this back in. I'll do it this way around uh, this time with the Samsung bar on the top because it's got that little lip that sticks up and then pop the power in. I don't really need this anymore because I'm not using the USB stick but I'll leave it in there for this bit. And I can see my monitor's already starting to come on. And let's pick Manjaro again because I really like that. And it's all booted up. So let me know what you get running with your Compute Module 4, because obviously everybody's got a different uh, case or carrier board for it, and uh, I'd be interested to know how compatible they all are. But this seems pretty compatible for running different operating systems, obviously in this minimal test. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.